I had a chance for the few years, you can see that throttle. It's picking up now. Okay, see, there's no delay. Maybe only when it's cold. Okay, watch the throttle. Yeah, see that? Yeah, that's good response. I think that's pretty good. Wait, wait, stop! You got mix in there? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one, huh? <laughs> yeah, don't mix it. Never mix it. So basically, about one. Okay. You know, oh, yeah, that's right. That's it. And pull it off the plastic. There you go. Yeah, they made it simple. One bolt removal, guys. That's a nice little feature. And it's just obviously it's gonna be stuck there. And there's your ECM. And they got a little lithium battery, 12 volt, 24 watt hour. I don't know, that's a different way to say it. Take a picture of that. So oh, like a, 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 tip, a tip, yeah. Yeah, tip over tip sensor? Over sensor yeah. That's in the bottom right there. That's it. In the darkness, but guys, this is your diagnostic plug. So essentially, for the dealer, unless you had your own own computer diagnostic tool, I don't know if the KTM's are proprietary diagnostics or sometimes you have aftermarket ones. So the coolant is like pink Kool-Aid from the KTM factory. So we'll be changing that out after the initial review. We'll see how the bike runs and then we'll throw the Amsoil polypropylene in there. The biodegradable coolant antifreeze with a little bit of coolant boost from Amsoil. That's right, that's what I was looking for. And of course I could put a cap on here and actually I get a temperature. It would be nice to have a digital, t digital coolant temperature, digital oil temperature would be awesome. Yeah, so all the ECUs are locked on these motorcycles and we'll just uh, plug it in and then unlock it. Okay, otherwise, so right now, yeah, the bike, if you if somebody was ripping off bikes out of the semi-truck... Not going to do anything. Did you have many customers from the 19 models that added a Kickstarter or did zero? Uh, no, yeah, no one. It's an expensive upgrade too now. Now it's like 500 bucks probably plus a little bit of work. It's not, it's just bolt on. It's, no. There's a few pieces installed and from the kit I've seen. Oh yeah, little pad. So what's next? Some foot bags. Yes, some heavy foot bags. Oh, I'm just by the car battery for the first time. People have recommended since I'm a tall guy, like to consider their lowering foot pegs with the bar risers. You know, you might hit your feet on a big rock, but you know you're gonna be more comfortable the 99.9% .9 of the time. For anybody who's been watching my superbike race videos and suspension, we all know we like to use a zip tie or essentially the proper designed tool to measure your travel travel length. And if you're not using all your fork travel and and so you can adjust your preload and compression and make sure you're not bottoming out and make sure you're using as much of the stroke as you want to. So they got one on each side. So that's just a cool little feature that uh, everybody should have on every motorcycle, including the rear shock. I don't see one on the shock, but it's so easy to access that I could just put my own on there. And you can see if you're using all the travel and by your adjustments. One of the annoying aspects of these KTM bikes is there's no spark arrestor, huh? They make a woods race bike that everyone's gonna need a spark arrestor these days. Times have changed, you can't get away without them. So that'll be an upgrade I have to do as well. Need a freaking spark arrestor. So Aubrey, give us an update. What uh, are you doing right now? So basically just putting the frame protectors on and that's standard with KTM. Oh, okay, let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, so your boot doesn't wear into the frame and make it ugly. That's it. Maybe a little grip. Maybe I'll have to get some stomp grip for up here to hang on with my uh, my knee braces. 
So I always wear knee braces because I got bad knees. Sometimes they wear into the plastic. All right, let's take a look at the stock gearing and if I can see it. It's a 13 front. You can see it right there, guys. And the rear, oh yeah, they put a 51 on the 2020s. I believe on the 19s they had a 50. They went a little, little slower gearing, a little shorter. Oh, this thing needs some single track, guys. It'll be interesting. Good test. You mean flat versus facing? Yeah. Well, this this can kind of go. Yeah, it could rotate or whatever. So, I told Aubrey that I'm a stand-up rider, so we're gonna lower him down slightly. It's so funny when you get on your friend's bikes or somebody who doesn't have any ergonomics yeah. at all, and then you're like, holy crap, your clutch and your brake is unrideable. Everyone's different though, right? Some guys like me to the moon, like sky high, and some guys are on way, way low. I think it's because they just didn't know better though. Like yeah. some people just buy a bike used and they just ride it. Yeah, yeah. And they don't realize that like bending your wrist up is ridiculous when you're like, you should be a straight wrist, you know, the way you stand. All right, so we just did some ergonomics setup for the brake and clutch. Now, what technique do you use, Aubrey, when you put bark busters on to remove the rubber? You just use like a blade and cut yeah, the end off? Cut the end off, yeah, make sure it doesn't catch on the hang board. And then you, do you, dr and then you drill out the center, or what yes. do you use to cut it? Yes, you drill out the center, yeah. Yeah, because it's actually plastic from plastic. the whole throttle. The whole throttle is plastic, yeah. Okay. Yes. So like a step, like a step bit. That's a step bit, 100%. And then just zip it off with a knife, and that's what I'll be doing then for my full bars. Even if I was not running wrapped hand guards, I would probably put those like plastic. Plastic bars or something. Yes, yeah, slide. No, but I mean on the end of the handlebars, oh, yeah, you yeah. put the sliders on, right? Yep. So because you know then it's gonna rip your. Those grips will just rip right off after your first serious fall. So you got to do something with them, guys. Either you put the, I like the wraparound bars, I grew up with them. We call them bark busters as a kid. Because you're going to smack trees with your handlebars and you don't want your hand to be in the tree. Plus, like if, you, if you're riding and then you think you're going to hit the tree, people go like this. And then smacks the bar and then you pretty much you're letting go of the handlebar as you smack a tree. So with the bark busters, you just smash through the little trees. And hang on and keep going. <laughs> so how long have you been wrenching on bikes in uh, South Africa before you came here? So in South Africa, 13 years just on KTMs. Just on KTMs? Just on KTMs. So you, yeah, we were only KTM brand, yeah. Oh, you were the one in, and where was the KTM dealer in what town? It was in Johannesburg. Oh, okay. So when you decided to move to Kelowna, did you already have the job lined up here? Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. You're like, hey, I got this KTM certificate. I got years and experience of KTMs. And then Benny, yeah. Yeah. Gave me opportunity. That's awesome. That's how it goes. I'm definitely enjoying um, watching you and your expertise here with the torque ranch. This is exactly what everyone wants to see. It's like, so now you guys know what the PDI is all about. With the. The Ninja 400, it wasn't quite as complex though. <laughs> it was like, the Ninja 400 was put the battery, you know, the battery fluid together, attach the battery, put the handlebars on, and that was about it. So, what air pressure do you think they ship these bikes from the factory, or do you remember from last year's? Um, depends. Um, well, sometimes you get them high though. Yeah. Well, they they don't set best. That's funny. Yeah, I'll probably be running like I'll start with 13, 13 12 yeah. maybe. Well, these things have those lightweight tubes in them, right? Yes. So on my first test drive, I'm going to be nervous about getting a flat tire with those little tubes. <laughs> yeah, it'll be golden. Yeah, and then of course I got to take it easy. Don't want to drop the bike and squish my rads before I get the radiator braces on there, and I don't want to dent up the pipe. You want your standard hand gloves on? Um, the KTM's come with. What do you call those little branch deflectors? You know, yeah, wind, wind deflector. You get a small deflector. The small branches. I've never tried these guys, so this is the perfect time to start before I put the big bark busters on. I'm also curious, and if you heard of this, by putting the bark busters where it's essentially attaching to the top 
mount to the bar end. Is do these bars flex and does that remove flex at all? They do flex it a little bit, yeah. So putting bark busters on, depending on the design, it might stop a little it flex. Might stop a little bit flexing, yeah. yeah. Especially when they mount it on top, yeah. Yeah, as opposed to the ones that mount on the, the bar. The bars itself, yes. Yeah, something to consider, guys. And what about skid plates? You know, big aluminum ones. Do you think there's any flex in the frame around the engine itself? No, not, not at the bottom there. It's all supported. Yeah, the only flex would be maybe to, to the the forks, the forks to, to, swing on. and you know maybe a little subframe, but that's mostly just your ass. So, my first moto was actually an eighty, an XL eighty, in nineteen eighty four, when I was in grade five. So that's how I got into dirt biking through my old man. Might as well give all my YouTube followers a little update about why I moto. And, and then I started racing woods on a KX80, a 96 KX80. And then I think it was like a 98 RM125 doing cross countries, hair scrambles, enduros. Took a lot of trophies in the enduro, in the junior class anyways. And, uh, and that was it guys. I stopped dirt biking as soon as I got my car license. And I fell in love with the steering wheel. It was all about drifting and rallying and stuff like that. Oh, hey guys. Welcome to another episode of the Bike Build series. And then, ironically, I went to superbike racing when I realized I couldn't race cars very affordably. <laughs> you know, you can buy like a... In fact, from VMS, from Barry, he helped me out back in 2006. My first street bike was a brand new, the, the 06 generation Gixxer 750. Okay. March 31st, I bought it from this store. And uh, Barry sponsored me with cost pricing then, and he's still doing it today. So yeah, guys, for, you know, for 12 grand, you can get a street bike, and it's essentially an open wheel race car. Okay, but to get an open wheel race car, that's a hundred plus thousand dollars. And, you know, they can go from there, up and up and up. Of course, you can crash a street bike and fix it. It's expensive. But you crash a car, that is really expensive. However, you're way more likely to crash a street bike, though. Because <laughs> you can just push and push and understeer and oversteer a race car. Uh, motorcycle, you crash, you crash. And that's the beauty of dirt biking, right, Aubrey? Is that you can crash these things over and over. And yeah. uh, the worst thing is what? No. A $200, 300 pipe, you know? Get up and go again. The, the biggest issue with dirt bikes is your body. You're going to have a lot of injuries. Um, you know, you tear your MCL, ACL. Come on, bike! Look! Look, look, look for me! Fuck. You're gonna have a lot of injuries. Um, you know, you tear your MCL, ACL, break your collarbone, whatever. Those are the main uh, main injuries that I know of. I actually did tear my ACL and MCL dirt biking. Oh no! Oh. You okay. Oh, oh, shit. Oh. oh, fuck. So, that's why I wear braces now. Just stupid jumping, jumping. I, I'm No more jumping dirt bikes for me. I'm done with that. Stick to the trails where it's safer. Oh, boy, My name is Marcel Ernie, your host of World's Best Motorcycles. Here with Aubrey at Valley Motorsport. The bike is practically assembled. Can't wait to ride it and give you guys my first impression review, as well as a 10, 20 hour review, full review. And Q Man and I will be going to Moab in the first two weeks of November. So after I do the initial review, I'm going to do the bike build, put on some parts from Emperor Racing. Um, some handlebar razors, bunch of stuff. 
I've reached out to a bunch of companies and they're sending me their products to give it a test. So we'll go from there. Here's a funny Timbit, guys. When you get a new bike or a new chain, look at all that grease. And you know that shit's gonna fling off everywhere. So anytime I put a new chain on my race bikes, I always use Amsel's metal protector or essentially kind of like trying to remove all the grease and then apply your own chain lube. So that way this, because this stuff's spring, it just, it gets stuck. It's hard to get off too. This, this, this chain grease is a disaster, guys, trying to get it off. So that's what we'll have to do before I, I, I start her up and start rigging it around. I'll clean the chain. So Aubrey was explaining to me off camera that these actually just attach onto the lever bolt, essentially. As you can see, so kind of weird design. Definitely not going to be that strong. Attaching to the perch with the one pivot point, pretty much. But that's it. Look what I found. So even from the factory, they don't actually use a rivet master link. They use the clip type links for all dirt bikes, huh? For street biking, that's pretty much a no-no unless you safety wire the, the clip, you know? Sometimes some leagues will let you use a clip, but then you have to safety wire the clip so it can't open up, you know? And, because yeah, obviously, on a, like yeah, it's just obviously a rivet type is a rivet is for life, <laughs> usually, anyways. As long as it's done wrong. I broke one train, one train, one chain once when I was racing the RK five twenty. I was in, I was in qualifying and just snapped it and rolled back to pit. So when you run out of two slip oil inside your tank, you get a little dongle with it. Plug it into your diagnostics. And you, oh, okay. And it just primes the system so you've got an air locks or air bubbles. Yeah, just like in my Duramax with the fuel primer that I've been battling with. <laughs> Same idea, you got to prime the filter or prime the fuel pump system. Just want to note, guys, that it's relatively short turn throttle. Not too bad. Quarter turn. So we're going to, next step is we are going to check the air pressure in the forks. Make sure it is what it's supposed to be, and from there I'll probably be removing air to see the comfort of the trails. Yeah, so it just has a battery in it, and that's it. this nice little pump system. If you guys missed what I mentioned earlier, WP is actually KTM's own brand, their own suspension brand, so it's all in-house, so they save a lot of money using their own suspension. And in the recent news, it was what, KTM bought 60% of gas gas, you read that? So it'll be interesting to see what they do with the gas gas line. Are they going to do what they did with Husqvarna and put more of their parts in it? Apparently it's still going to be manufactured at the gas gas, which is a Spanish company. You know, so the diehard gas gas guys, you know, they might uh, jump ship if, if the factory changes, you know, but, or they might just be like, oh, this is just great. We're getting more refinements. KTM is trying to take over the market, make, trying to dominate. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And so to adjust the air pressure, it's just trying to get in there with an eight. Is that what it is? So I guess in a minute. Okay, there you are. So you're starting to screw on, and we're not losing any air at the same time. Yep, sealed. So 8.09 bar. Does this thing also show pounds or no? Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're at 8.26 bar. And that's PSI, 117 PSI. 117, so that's actually lower than what I was reading online that they come with, or the factory sets them at. 9.6. Do, do you remember what you've done on all the other A's, air forks? Uh, ran about nine to start. Nine with. bar, or, yeah. but do you know pounds then, or no? No, no pounds. I was reading 138 was stock on the pounds, but that would be US bikes, because they always use pounds, obviously. So nine might be, I don't, we'd have to look at the translation guys. In the video, I'll throw in what <laughs> nine bars is.
And as you see, as Aubrey's pumping it up, the digital gauge is giving us 8.59, 8.6. Now, there is a downside to air instead of a spring. That must be elevation change, right? Yeah, All of a sudden, yeah, you go up to, sure. yeah. you're doing the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, and you go up to 17,000 feet elevation. All of a sudden, you got way less, <laughs> way less spring. <laughs> What the hell? I feel like the head over moved. Shit. Get on the gas. Horrible exit. Full throttle. Trail it in. No power, I'm losing battery. Uh. Oh. oh shit! Front tire is a disaster. Okay, that was bullshit. That run was fucking bullshit, guys. Losing the front everywhere. I did not like that. It was way too dangerous. Holy shit, fucking alarm. Shut up. All right, so you got nine bar, and is there a bleeder on the back, too? Yeah, it's got a little bleeder in the Oh, bit nice. Bit. You can get it quite accurate as well. Interesting, I've never seen a video on this pump. Nobody's ever bothered to film yeah, it. That's it. Yeah, so I'll put that in my bag when I'm going dirt biking. Here you go, nine bar. That's close enough, bud. That's close enough. There's not much engine brake on these two strokes. Wow. And I stole it. Yeah, some people do conversion kits on these bikes. Essentially, you you know, air is limiting. It doesn't have as much oil, and um, of course, the elevation's an issue. And some people say it's a little stiff on the top. Stiff on the top. Yeah. yeah, but they also say you got to break these in, no? Yes, it's gonna still fit in down as well. So I think it was like eight hours. They start to feel a little. Start to feel more flush. Yeah. And. Uh, if you guys have been following me and you're not just new to the channel for this video, you know I'm, I'm working and sponsored by Barry Russell at KFG Motorsports in, in Washington. And so I talked to him about the Air Forks and the Explorer Fork, which I could have got with the W. And so the Air Fork, you know, it, it comes on the race bike, the cross country version. It's a little better for fast speeds, you know, if you, which is racing, you're ripping fast. While the Explorer is much softer on the compression stroke. Yes. Basically, we're going through a, a sweep. We're testing all the clicks basically as far as you want to go out. It's about 20 clicks, and then we go to 18, 16, 14. And then you can. Are you doing compression rebound together? Yes. Um, essentially, if you hit the whoops, the whoops, the bumps, the jumps on the Explorer, you need that thing revalved right away. Yes. But it doesn't cost much money to revalve the Explorer with the open cartridge design. Um, however, with this, if I want to revalve this, it's a little more money on this system. Either you switch it and you put cartridges in it, and you can, you know, you can get like an Olin's cart or K Tech cart. Um, I don't know if WP actually makes their own, but you know, then you're looking at around a thousand dollars to change the whole. Just like we do in superbike racing, we just you put in the Olin's gas pressurized cartridge kit. For around 1500 US dollars. One of the comparisons when I was looking at buying a new bike was like what suspension they come with. So when I'm looking at the say the new Beta, you know they come with a SAX suspension. Well SAX is pretty crappy suspension in terms of comparison sake. However the new Beta race editions for 2020 they come with uh, the KYB on the front end. Which is a great fork, and so a lot of they're going to sell a lot of bettas because of the, that fork. However, you're still stuck with the sax rear, though. So I don't know. They didn't want to spend the money and get the full setup. But keep in mind, guys, any bike you get, you can change the suspension. It's just one of those things, you know. You can revalve it for a few hundred bucks, or or completely redo the cartridges for over a thousand on the front and the back. I also should mention about the pipe. 
notice they created this rib system and it it seems thicker and obviously when you put you know what you could say like angles or cuts into something you can make it stronger just simply like making bracing for anything wait wait stop you got mix in there yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one huh <laughs> Yeah, don't mix it. Never mix it. Yeah, yeah. That's right, guys. Some people, some people were asking on the forums. It's like, oh, you know, can I, for safety's no. sake, can I add a little? But no, don't. you're gonna clog up your injector. Clog up injectors, yeah. yeah. Not made for it. Now a fuel cleaner will be fine, but not not oil. No, no oil. <laughs>